Have you ever noticed how a calm mind can really set the stage for a good night's sleep? That's the idea behind our new podcast, Good Sleep. Greg, our host from Optimal Relationships Daily, is here to help ease you into a peaceful night's rest with some positive affirmations. And these affirmations aren't just comforting. They can help ease anxiety and nurture positive thoughts, setting you up for true good sleep. So press play on good sleep tonight because a good tomorrow starts with a good night's sleep. Just search for good sleep in your podcast app and be sure to pick the one from Optimal Living Daily. This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 2476. Simple Ways to Improve Your Debt Management Skills by Jeff Rose of goodfinancialsense.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. This is the show where I serenade you with the sweet sounds of personal finance knowledge from some of the best blogs on the planet, with the author's permission, of course. And we're gonna get right to today's post as we optimize your life. Simple Ways to Improve Your Debt Management Skills by Jeff Rose of goodfinancialsense.com. With the economy finally out of recession, it's never been more important to take a look at your financial situation and tweak what you can to improve your debt management skills. With so many of us falling into debt and the nation's finances a lot weaker than they were, it's best that you do what you can to keep on top of your debt. Here are a few tips on how you could improve your debt management skills. Number one, create a budget. Budgeting is about knowing how your finances work and controlling what you do with your money. In other words, not letting your money control you. When you create a budget, you'll need to, A, keep track of everything you earn. The very first thing you need to understand when budgeting is exactly how much money comes into your house each month. So you should start by writing down everything your household earns or receives in a month. This includes salaries, benefits, grants, etc. B, keep track of everything you spend. Now that you know exactly how much money comes into your house each month, you need to be aware of how much actually leaves your household too. A good way to do this is to track your spending for one month, writing down everything you spend. This will obviously take one full month, which will delay your attempts to improve your debt management skills, but it's a good way to get a complete picture of your spending. So start by writing down your priority debts, payments to mortgage or rent, utility bills, secured loans, etc., and your everyday living costs, such as food and travel. Don't forget to factor in the things you might pay for on an annual basis, like car insurance, for instance. Note, at this stage, you should not include the money you spend on your non-priority debts, credit cards, store cards, personal loans, etc., or any money you spend on non-essential products and services, like things you can live without. And C, work out your disposable income. Once you're confident that you've accounted for all of your essential living costs, you can work out your disposable income. Your disposable income is essentially the amount you have left on a monthly basis to pay towards your non-priority debts. And if you have any spare after doing this, to save and spend on non-essential goods and services. To work out your disposable income, simply subtract your monthly expenditure from your monthly income. Once you know how much your disposable income is, you'll need to work out how much the monthly repayments to all your non-priority debts costs you. Now compare this with your disposable income. If it's big enough to cover your debt repayments, you should be fine. However, if it isn't big enough, it's important that you rectify this problem as soon as possible. You can start by letting your creditors know you're experiencing problems and seeking professional debt advice to find the most appropriate solution to your problem. Number two, Cut back on non-essential spending. Once you've worked out your budget and can see whether or not your disposable income is enough to cover the cost of your unsecured debts, you could focus on cutting back on non-essential spending to free up a little bit of extra money each month. Here are a few tips on how to do this. A, create a list of everything you spend and highlight the items you don't actually need. Make a list of everything you spend in a month, including spending on non-essentials, such as chocolate, magazines, CDs, etc. 
Once you've done this, go through the list and highlight the items you don't actually need. Once you've highlighted those items, you should add up how much you spend on them. This is money you didn't actually need to spend and could have been used for other purposes, which brings us on to the next point. B, remove these items from your budget. Try and remove as many of these non-essential items from your monthly budget as you can. The money you free up by doing this can be used for other purposes, which again brings us on to our next and final point. Three, use any spare money to overpay your debts. The extra money that you're not spending on non-essential goods and services can be used to overpay your debts each month, to pay more than you need to. Overpaying your debts can be an excellent way to improve your debt management skills. By overpaying your debts, you'll reduce the amount of money you owe at a faster rate, and it should reduce the amount of time you're in debt as well as the total amount you'll pay in interest, providing you don't take on any more debt. You just listened to the post titled Simple Ways to Improve Your Debt Management Skills by Jeff Rose of goodfinancialsense.com. Labor strikes, climate change, your beat up office printer. What do they all have in common? Come on, it's all about the money. Economics is everywhere and everything fueling our lives, even where we least expect it. If you're a fan of Optimal Finance Daily and are curious to learn something new and exciting about economics every week, I recommend you listen to the Planet Money podcast from NPR. Planet Money is a different kind of world where the complex economy actually makes sense, where human stories supersede abstract theories. Listeners can learn, laugh, and be entertained. It's econ, down to earth, and Planet Money answers some of life's burning questions, like will AI take over our jobs? Why are Christmas trees so darn expensive? The Planet Money team lives to tell a good story in around 30 minutes. It's econ for the rest of us. Tune into Planet Money every week for entertaining stories and insights about how money shapes our world, stories that can't be found anywhere else. Listen now to Planet Money from NPR wherever you get your podcasts. In order to pay off your debt, it's extremely important to throw as much money as you can at it, especially if it's high interest debt. If you just make the minimum payment, the interest that compounds over time will cause that debt to balloon into a much bigger problem. But this can be difficult if you don't have an intimate understanding of your income and other expenses. And that's where budgeting and tracking expenses comes in. Remember, a budget is just the simple act of telling your money where to go versus wondering where it went. It's an exercise in awareness. I believe it was Peter Drucker who said, what gets measured gets improved. The simple act of paying attention to your spending and engaging with a budget does wonders for changing behavior. I remember when I was paying off debt, because I would enter every expense into a tracking app at the time I was making the purchase, it made me hyper aware of how that spending related to my overall budget. Making that behavior of tracking expenses a habit helped me curb spending because I forced myself to look at the reality of my choices with eyes wide open. A budget only really helps you if you continually engage with it. This means you're regularly assessing your actual spending against what you've budgeted. By continually engaging with your budget, you'll be able to see where you need to make adjustments or where you are being unrealistic about desired spending versus actual spending. And that's a wrap for another Monday show. Have a great start to your week, and I'll be back tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.